All right, gentlemen, now I'm recording. And as I told you before, on the left, we have the situation, put the, these things in order to the right conditional. On the right, we have the form. So how do you create this conditional? Let me send this to your chat. Uh, 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 chat is here. All right, one second, there we go, okay. Wonderful, so everyone's back. Uh, yeah, they're coming. Okay, everyone's back, I, I hope. I hope you had a good time. Now, uh, I think this is all good. There, there are no mistakes, wonderful guys. So here are the situations. So imperative, zero conditional. Zero conditional I create with if present simple and present simple. It is also true for a law, zakon, then general scientific truth, and then we have the first conditional uh, threat, then future possibility and its result. If present simple, so if A happens, B will happen. And A can happen. There is some possibility this can happen. The second conditional, I either dream or I'm talking about some imaginary situation uh, which cannot happen, all right? Now, uh, and I'm talking about the result. So if A happened, then B would happen. And A cannot happen, it's very unlikely. It's either my dream or I'm talking about changing some situation or some kind of situation which can never happen or it, at least it's very unlikely. So it, we begin with if past simple and then we have would and infinity. There are a few little exceptions here and there uh, and I will show you soon, okay? Now, when you see it here, th there's the second slide right here you will see there are uh, phrases already. There are some sentences that are full. And you will find that uh, these are zero, first, or second conditional. So gentlemen, again, I'll put you into rooms for two minutes and try to put the sentences to the correct place. That means if I was or were rich, I would buy a tiger. Now, is this the first conditional, zero, or the second? Then you put it to the right place again. You will move it you will move it to the conditional, all right? Let's say you believe it's the second conditional, you put it to the second conditional. So let me put you into rooms again and work on slide number two. Ooh, imaginary. Uh, I would say yeah. it's more of dreaming, no? I'm not rich now. Dreaming. I'm not rich and I want to be rich. I'm dreaming and I'm saying, oh, if I were rich, I would buy a tiger. Yeah, yes. Anybody here, guys, you can raise your hand uh, using the over here in reactions. It's somewhere here down, the, down here on this at the bottom. If you know why I used was and were in one sentence, because both are correct. Can anybody explain the difference between was and were? The difference is really little. I mean, it, it means the same, but it depends who says it. Anybody knows? You can just unmute yourself and tell us. No one? Okay, gentlemen, so let me tell you. I think I said it in the video class, but I'm not super sure now. No. So if I, if I say, if I was, that's American. If I say, if I were, this is British. Now, the thing is, we have learned that the second conditional is with past simple and this is absolutely true but there is one little exception and that is the verb be if i am british let's say if, or if i was british i would say if i were rich so british would always use were if i were if you were if he were if she were if it were if we were if you were if they were but if i was american I would use normal past simple. So that means if I was, if you were, if he, she, it were, sorry, if he, she, it was, if we were, if you were, if they were. So past simple is true with a little exception for uh, the verb be. In British English, the verb be has the form of uh, were every time. Now, I hope that it's easier now to understand, but they have the same meaning, of course. 